Hello everyone, welcome to day 9th of September Lead Code Challenge and today's question is largest plus sum. In this question, we are given a grid of size n cross n and there are two types of elements that are placed on this grid. One is 0 and the other one is 1. So we need to tell what is the length of the longest plus sign that can be formed on this grid. Let's try and understand it by an example. Here. Uh, this is the length of the longest one that can be formed on this grid and its length is 2. The length is 2 by virtue of this, these two elements 1 and 2 uh, because there are no more elements to its left and bottom greater than 2 hence the length of this plus sign is 2. We have understood this question and now let's move on to the presentation that I have created for this. Also, this question is not a very hard question. I would say it's a medium level question and with slight thought, you'll be able to do it by yourselves. So let's move on to the PPT. Largest plus sign lead code 848 medium on lead code. So let's take the same example that was specified in the question. Uh, we will perform some iterations over this grid so as to arrive at the solution. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing that I'm going to do is to move across each row starting from the leftmost terminal to the rightmost terminal and I want to keep track of the number of ones that I have witnessed so far in a contiguous manner. So let's fill this grid. This is the first element 1. So we have 1 here. The next element is also 1. So I'll add 2 here. Next element is also 1. I'll add 3 here. Next I have another element. I'll add 4 here. Next I have another element. I have four, 5 here. Uh, let's move on to the next row. Here uh, again we'll start from 1 because the first element is 1. Let's fill the rest of the elements 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 because as you move you will see these are contiguous in nature. Similarly for the third row as well 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Similarly for the fourth row as well 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's talk about the next row which is interesting row. We have 1 here, then we have 2 here, then we have a 0. And as soon as I see a 0, I reset my variable. So it becomes 0. And let's move ahead to the next element. Next I have 1. And let's move ahead. Next I have another 2 by virtue of these two funds that are contiguous in nature. So I have iterated over the complete matrix and I have built my another array uh, moving in from the leftmost terminal to the rightmost terminal in each row. Let's do the reversal of this. This time I'll move in the reverse direction from right to left. So let's start. I'll, let me just change the color of pen and let's start from the first row itself. We have I have one then I have another one so one plus one is two then I have another one, 3, then I have another one, 4, then I have another one, 5. So let me just fill 1 here, 2 here, 3 here, 4 here, 5 here. Similar thing will be reciprocated across all the 4 rows because they are exactly same. So let me quickly write those up. And the next row as well, 4, 5, again, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 and let's talk about the last row which is slightly different. The first element is 1 so I'll fill in 1. The next element is also 1. I'll fill in 2. The next element is 0. As soon as you see the 0 you reset that variable and this becomes 0. Next I have 1 because there is another 1. Next I have 2 because there are two contiguous 2's moving from the leftmost terminal to the rightmost terminal. Let's start the iteration in the other two directions. This time I'll be moving from top to bottom and then from bottom to top column wise. So let's start. I'll be moving from top to bottom first and here I see a 1 so I'll add 1 here then I see another 1 I'll add 2 here then I see another 1 I'll add 3 here then I see another 1 I'll add 4 here then I see another 1 I'll add 5 here and let's continue the process for the next column. Uh, it's exactly same as we see in the previous column all are 1 so let me just fill in directly and quickly. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Similarly, uh, let's 
walk through this case here this is slightly different so i have one here let me just add one next i have another one i'll add two next i have another one i'll add three next i have another one i'll add four in the last case you see a zero so as soon as you see a zero you reset the counter it's similar to prefix sum next i have one two three four and five let's move in the next column one two three four five it's exactly same as the first column I have filled in the complete matrix. I have checked the sum of the contiguous ones that I see while moving from the topmost to the bottommost direction. And let's walk through in the reverse direction. And let me just change the color of pen. This time, let me take blue. And here we will move from the bottom to the top. The first element that I see is one. So I'll have one here. Then I have another one. So I'll have two here. Then I have another one. Then I'll have three here. Then I see another one. I'll have four here, and then another one. I'll have five here. It's exactly these two columns are exactly same. So same data across both the columns. One, two, three, four, five. The third column is slightly different. It starts from zero, so we'll have zero here. That's resetting the counter again. One, two, three, and four. Let's walk to the next column. We have one, two, three, four, and five. Because these are contiguous in nature. Let's move on to the next column. One, two, three, four, and five. Exactly same as the first column. And let's talk about the final closure statement. We have calculated this data iterating in all the four directions. So let me just re-iterate those four directions. The first one represents moving from left to right. This one represents moving from right to left. This one represents moving from top to bottom, and this one represents moving from bottom to top. And once you have this data, can you conclude the answer now? It will be equal to the maximum value out of the minimum value in all these four matrices at each index. Mathematically, it is converted to max of minimum of a of i comma j, b of i comma j, c of i comma j. Similarly, we'll have d of i comma j. And how can we justify this? So let's walk through one of the example. Here in this matrix, uh, you see this is a maximum plus sign, and its length is two. It is governed by two factors. One is from its left terminal, starting from its left terminal, going up till the right terminal and the other one by virtue of the bottom terminal because from from starting from this one the length is 2 with respect to the leftmost terminal starting from this end the length is 2 uh, with respect to the bottommost terminal because in the rightmost direction we have more elements in the upwards direction again we have more elements so let's try and compare this with the investigations that we did moving from left to right and from bottom to up so this is a matrix from left to right. What is the value held at this particular index? The value is two, which is an absolute sync with what was expected by virtue of its leftmost index. Let's talk about its bottommost value. The bottommost value is two again. Here in this matrix, we were moving from bottom to top and the value held is again two. This brings me to the end of today's concept. Let's just move on to the coding section and I'll exactly do the same thing as I specified here. Let's walk through the solution. Here I have defined a build grid method because the input was given in a different format rather than the 2D matrix where we have one and zeros. Uh, we are given the size of the matrix and we are given the places where zeros are placed on the grid. So uh, let's talk about this helper method. This helper method is responsible for returning a 2D matrix. Uh, where all the elements are specified as one which are non mine places and all the elements are specified as zero which are mine places so i created a new input grid of size n cross n i filled in the complete grid uh, with one signifying there there are no mines placed and then i started iterating over the mines input array and uh, updated its value as per the location present in the mines array and in the end, I simply return the input grid. Let's talk about the core method now. Here I have defined 
a left to right array that will store the cumulative sum while moving from the leftmost direction to the rightmost direction for each row and these are the two loops that are responsible i have defined a running sum variable if my input grid value turns out to be zero i reset the running sum variable otherwise i update the running sum variable with whatever value was present in the input grid which will be one once i'm done with these two conditions i simply assign the running sum value to my left to right array at i comma j index similarly i do the same thing for all the four directions right to left top to bottom bottom to top and once i have those four arrays built up i take a answer variable i iterate starting from the ith index equals to zero up till the i less than n similarly for j equals to zero j less than n for each index i calculate the minimum length present across all the four matrices left to right right to left bottom to top top to bottom and once i have this minimum length i compare it with my answer variable and i pick up the one that was of maximum value in the end i simply return the answer so let's try this up the solution is accepted the time complexity of this approach is order of n into n with because we were given a square matrix and the space complexity is four times for this solution n into n uh, now the task for you guys is to reduce the space complexity instead of you having four different grids for moving in four different directions you can store it in the singular grid and if you want uh, to try that solution up please do that once you are done with the solution raise a pr on the get repo that i'm attaching the link to and i'll approve i'll be happy to approve that as the final solution this brings me to the end of today's session i hope you enjoyed it if you did please don't forget to like share and subscribe to the channel thanks for viewing it have a great day ahead and stay tuned for more updates from coding decoded i'll see you tomorrow with another fresh question till then goodbye